Hi everyone, just another basics uh, presentation here for Rhino 4. I was going to go through today just the various ways that you can uh, view your model and then how you can manipulate a camera to uh, get particular views. So the first thing is just viewing the model. We've taken a the model we've used on a previous video and I'll just show you the various ways you can see uh, the model so uh, you can use that for modelling purposes in various ways. If you right click you'll see where my cursor is on the upper right hand corner of the view you've got a variety of options there that allow you to see the model in, in various ways. So if you need to see through the model to the various components you can sort of see there you've got a wireframe and that's the, the easiest ways, way to manipulate the model if you've got a complex file. As soon as you start having shaded views and that sort of thing, things can slow down as, as you get a complex model. So we'll go to a shaded view now. And in this view, you can obviously see the general massing of any design that you've got and the breakup of the various component parts. Okay. Next down that list you'll see rendered okay so once you allocate colors to it although this isn't a final rendering by any means you can see just the basic balance of colors that are there okay so when you do render it which takes a little bit a little bit longer than just manipulating the model you can sort of see the difference there on the screen between what's on the model and what you'll get out of the final render Okay, after that, and I, although I use these less often, they can be handy for just manipulating things. You've got a ghosted view, which allows you to partially see through the various elements of the model. Okay, similar to that is an X-ray view, but that's based on the shaded framing, the shaded model. Penguin. Oh, I haven't got that installed, so that's not a big deal at this stage. Well, it is installed, but it's not activated yet. Flat shading, again, not dissimilar to the shaded view. So primarily, it's the first three that are the key ones. The wireframe, the shaded view, and the rendered view are the ones that you'd normally be working with. Okay, next, how we manipulate the model. Well, you can sort of see that if I right click on my mouse I can orbit and maneuver my model to whatever position I need. So that's the first option in terms of getting the views that you want. Okay. However if you need a more precise setting which obviously you will for you know getting the final views you've got a number of options. Option one, I'll go to the four viewport thing is that you've got the camera there. If you right click on the upper corner of the view to set camera and then roll down to show camera, you'll sort of see in the other views a little triangle. Well, that's the viewing angle or the view cone of the camera to get that position. If you sc scroll over the top of that, you can then grab that camera point and you'll see I can maneuver the camera quite precisely to whatever position I want. Okay, I can do it in a number of views. Now the important thing about this is it gives you a little bit more precise way to manipulate the model and it gives you a guide as to where things are pointing. Okay, the next thing in terms of manipulating your model is just to go to the viewport properties and you'll see here you've got the precise settings for the camera position, the target and the lens size. So if we go to the 50mm lens, click OK, you'll see the view automatically adjusts. OK, it's as basic as that. So just for this limited skill, just remember if you want to view your model, you've got wireframe, shaded, which is generally the most useful I find, and rendered, which is at the final stage of the process. And in terms of manipulating your model, you've got right-click on your mouse to manipulate it in whatever direction you, you need. You've got uh, setting up the camera, which means just go to set camera, then show camera, and then you can just grab it and 
just F6. Get it up there again. Okay, and you'll see. Hold on. Show camera. Show camera. There we go. And then you can maneuver it by the other viewports for more precise measurements. And finally, you've got viewport settings. Now, the critical thing with the viewport setting is if you need a natural um, viewing point, 1.6 metres would be the typical uh, head height of your average viewer. You can click OK, and then automatically you're getting views which are going to be more natural than just manipulating it, uh, uh, by, uh, appro approximating it by just right-clicking on the mouse there. Okay, good luck with that. Bye.